this meeting to order. Parks Commission meeting. April 3rd, 2023. First thing we do is we uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. So we rise. Pledge of Allegiance. So we have public comments next. We ask you if you'd like to give, uh, give pu uh, public comments about um, topics that are not on the agenda tonight, then please approach now. I will give an opportunity to give public comments after each of our agenda items. Either way, uh, if you can limit your comments to three minutes and state your name and, um, and the address for the record, please. So uh, this is work that began in early 2022, and uh, we're at the point where we're on this, uh, need to make the decision whether to move forward to design or not. This is the same place that we were at in February, at our February meeting. And um, the moving to design is, is the next natural step. Um, after the feasibility was studied or study was completed, recommendation to move to design is not a recommendation to construct anything. But during design, um, the purpose of design um, is to answer many of the outstanding questions on cost, aesthetics, noise abatement, and so forth. So, um, at this point, I'll leave it up to Josh. Uh, the staff is recommending we do move forward with. With design, and I'll let him explain. Sure. Yeah, just a little background on how we got to this point. Um, the feasibility study uh, that was in November of last year, or sorry, um, 2021. No, feasibility. I'm sorry, pickleball. pickleball. That's what. That's how we got to this point. Yeah. Um, the uh, our commission moved forward with the uh, feasibility study at the golf course. What we found is that, yes, that site is feasible. We did have limited public engagement at that point. Um, <clears throat> what we have in front of us from a staff perspective is that we had two options. We can move forward into preliminary design. Gives us options to continue community engagement. Gives us opportunities to address some of those concerns and, and to really focus in on what that true cost for the project would be. Option two would be to remove this golf course park enhancement plan uh, from our CIP goals. At the last meeting, we talked about some additional sites. Our, our pickleball subcommittee, really, they did a great job focusing on the sites that, that were viable. And uh, we're just starting to go over some of the, the same process that we had already gone through. So we're adding another step that really shouldn't have been there. Uh, so really we're looking at two options. We can move forward with this into preliminary design, or we can remove this from our CIP goals. Okay. Yeah, so we had the, we faced the same decision on, at our February meeting, which is our last, was our last formal meeting. The, uh, for anyone who was here, the commission decided that we want to take it up at that meeting, and instead we needed, uh, we would like to postpone until tonight. And for a couple reasons. One is to continue to understand the feedback from the community. 
Number two is to bring all the commissioners up to speed on all the aspects of the work that has already been completed. Some, uh, because we split up into subcommissions, some of the commissioners were more involved along the way than others. <clears throat> And then three, uh, we wanted to take up the matter in our March workshop, which we did. Um, we had a great discussion. Uh, we had almost everyone there. We, Jan and, and um, Sandy were not there, but they contributed. Um, we, from that meeting, there were two takeaways. One was, like Josh mentioned, there were some additional sites that we wanted the time to review which we did, and uh, we'll have uh, Cameron present some of those findings here. And the second thing was that a question got brought up about the financial viability, long-term financial viability of the golf course, and how this um, uh, pickleball and uh, ice rink and other golf enhancement projects would contribute to the long-term viability of the golf course there because that's something that has been on our radar for a couple years and that's important to us that we address. So, um, let's see, during March we, uh, we worked to answer some of those questions and um, including, like I said, the additional sites and then we also explored further the um, site behind fire station number one and Cameron is going to, uh, going to share that right now. So a lot of you have seen this grid. It's been expanded over the time here. As more sites have come available, I've also color-coded it just to make it a little bit easier to see. Yes would mean uh, it's an easy thing to do. No would mean that it would probably be a negative impact. Uh, red and green to make it easier. So the first four sites you see there are ones that we've presented over time. The golf course, Casco Rink, Half Buried and Fire Station 1, and we've added five new sites. Oh no, sorry, we also talked about the public works. So we had five initial, and I've added four more based on our work session. So uh, just as a recap, um, we're looking at, can it support the pickleball sites, the four to six courts? Uh, does it support adequate parking? Are there ability to use restrooms? Is parking available? Uh, distance nearest to the nearest homes? Going to be built without displacing another activity and then the ability to support traffic flow with minimal disruption to the park and so these are all perceptive i will admit that this is our perception of, of how it goes and so that's why i want to present the other commissioners uh, of the research that we've done here um, and please stop me and ask questions as we go um, so the new sites that we've looked at um, are the namar playground and Chirsky was looking at that one as well um, Kick it over to you if you have any additional thoughts or comments of when you looked at that, but my general perception was very close to homes. Uh, it was a slightly bit small, but I'd love to hear your comments as well. I do. I did take a quick look at that um, and did a little Google map that Josh has on his computer. And I can just walk you through it real quick. Thanks. So this is um, an outline of the city-owned parcels at Navarre Town Center. And um, so you'll see, you know, here's Lulu's Pizzeria, the Nero Saloon, there's Culver's, here's Lund's, just to get everybody situated. Um, right now, it's a 116-space parking lot that I just learned, maybe with some change, it's going to be reconstructed or reserved. Yeah, they're going to be doing an overlay at the parking lot, and I believe some islands are going in as well, so some okay. kind of change. Mm -hmm. And does that, when is that happening? It goes out for bid next month. Okay. So that could impact on what I'm about to show you, but, and then here's Navarre Playground. And that, I just did a couple of little overlays. So one of the conditions on the site is that there's a slope. So it's flat here where there's an existing sport court. And then there's the top of the slope, it kind of slopes down. Um, there are gathering crosses that he slopes down. So again, flat on the playground area. Um, the edge of the playground is right here. Um, so, you know, if anything beyond that slope, Point, you're really uh, impacting the playground. And then I looked, I, I wanted to look at, you know, what would it look like up here and what would it look like down here. So I just laid out, you know, that's a four square grid of, of courts um, at the top of the slope. It would impact the playground. Um, this is four linearly arranged at the bottom of the slope, but again, you would have 
substantial earthwork down here. Um, but I did then say, well, what if you, what if you split those two, and you did two, and I guess that got messed up, but two courts here, and then two courts here, you would not impact the playground. You would pretty much keep the distance the same as the existing sports court um, in terms of you know impacts to those homes. And then down here, you would have some minimal earthwork. You would probably have a seat wall level retained edge on those two sides, and you would lose 14 parking spaces. So that's it. Thank you. That was really detailed. I appreciate it. The next place that came up was Beaterwood Park, um, and Jan was taking that on. Ultimately, Beaterwood um, is a, uh, a lot more open facility. Um, it cannot be built without displacing or moving some existing infrastructure. Um, we could possibly move the playground, uh, maybe behind the ball field, might be a nice proximity uh, to people watching uh, the sports there. Uh, and so that's, that's also an option, any additional. Thoughts, Jen? No. Great. Uh, Gordy was taking a look at the schools. Um, they currently do have uh, lines painted on the tennis courts up front. They are available when the uh, school is not using the courts. Uh, my understanding was that they don't have plans to build more. Anything else to add to that? And we, uh, Brian and I had a conversation with uh, the woman who does the scheduling at the school um, and uh, activity center. Um, they have a lot of pickleball programming happening there now with when uh, lessons begin our classes, there's a pro that teaches <coughs> lessons on those four courts. The net height is not ideal for, um, for pickleball, but um, they are um, getting a lot of use out of those, those programs. Um, they seemed um, receptive to working with us to try to find a, a joint solution, and um, uh, we're working towards having a meeting to further discuss the OK Kids site over here. But as long as um, uh, pickleball is not a high school sport, they don't have plans today to those on school grounds, but um, there does seem to be a possibility for a stronger partnership uh, between the Parks Commission and the school district to try to find something in this general area um, and, and perhaps even the OK Kids site. So more to come on that. Great. And can you clarify how many courts do you have on there? They have four, I believe, um, on those four tennis courts. But yeah. Thanks, Gordy. Uh, and then the final site that was brought up was the new public works site, uh, and that's brought up by Rick. Any comments there? My understanding is that it'd be very challenging to utilize the ground there, uh, and that just being an active public works site, that they wouldn't allow a lot of access for us. I didn't have a chance to look at it since we met in February, but that's part of pretty accurate. Great. So based on this findings, um, my still top recommendation is the golf course. I've heard a lot of concerns from residents uh, about safety, about noise, about traffic, uh, all things that we would have to look into and mitigate that would happen during the planning phase. Um, I will say I just had the opportunity for vacation in, uh, in Mexico where we got to play a lot of pickleball, um, mostly uh, planning on submitting that expense, by the way, Josh, doing research. Um, but it, I, I found it interesting. I've tried to understand, so the five courts there, I've tried to understand at what point could I even do the pickleball play? And, and it was pretty active. All five courts were used every morning um, for multiple hours by the residents who lived in or around this community. Um, and it, they had a building about 200 feet away that had some space to work. And so I actually took my back out and worked there one day, just trying to understand the noise level. And at 200 feet, I was straining to hear the noise of pickleball. So I do think there's a lot of perceptions about pickleball, about noise and concerns. Um, and and I would encourage any of you to get out there and listen and try to find some sites because um, we've all seen a lot of data about pickleball being built in communities and how upset people are. And if you Google those, a lot of those are built in people's backyards, 50 feet uh, or less, even 150 feet. Um, and so when we're talking about 600, I am much less concerned about that. Um, but that's my personal perception and my recommendation is that uh, of all of our locations in the city, it's not to say it's the only one. It has the least um, the least uphill climb, in my opinion, as far as a viable site. Could anyone clarify if any more uh, work has been done on the donation garden, the site behind the uh, Orno um, Station? Yeah. Um, so 
we did meet with um, the curator of the donation garden. Um, moving the donation garden um, is a non-starter. It's really hard. They worked really hard to get that up and running. Um, there's raised beds. There's um, infrastructure there. Um, it's, it doesn't mean that we couldn't. It's just they would ask that we don't move it. There's a 25-foot setback um, of that site. And so to pick a whole course in parking uh, with the shape of the donation garden would be very challenging in that site. Doesn't mean that we couldn't work with it, um, but that is, that is my, that's the hardest part of that site. Any other questions from the yeah. The other thing we, we learned about that site is uh, we had a uh, job put together an estimate for customer, which is, came out to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Including parking lot would be about three hundred and thirty thousand. Yep. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to use the existing parking lot there as it is now. Yep. Right. There is no parking lot. So, so uh, we added some other sites here. Do you, uh, Cameron, do you have, or anyone else have any comments on some of these other sites that we added? Sandy, from a pick more perspective, or I, you know, talking with the the folks within the pickleball community, I think, you know, they play just about anywhere. You know, give them a flat surface and a net and they're going to be happy. Um, you know, my interest in the golf course, I think, had more to do with the, the broader visibility in the community and this opportunity to create more of a center where I go to where people would golf and they go and they play pickleball and you have the, you know, the clubhouse and things. So I, that was really what excited me about putting it there. but. Um, if we were purely looking at it from a pickleball perspective, um, I would choose the cheapest site you can find, right? Um, I think in light of the conversations about sound um, and reading a, a lot on the pickleball sound mitigation website um, that you can find um, on Facebook, I've been following that for a number of months, um, you, you, you really want a minimum of the 400 feet. So anything less than that, I think, is probably unfair, right? Whether it's one homeowner or a dozen homeowners. Um, so I would, I would be, I'm concerned with the size of what we tried to do at the golf course in one development, right? I think it was a, a significant fundraising effort, and um, I think it sh we should have, we should have thought about it more in phases rather than try to do the whole thing. So I think if we, if, we, if we do look back at the golf course and taking it a step further, I'd like to see a minimalist version where we would phase other things later. Um, so, I mean, those are my thoughts. Um, but, yeah, if, if you know, Beaterwood or one of those offered a, a really, a, you know, much less expensive alternative, I think, that would be um, actually my preference at this point. Because I don't think we're gonna do anything this year. So Josh, I had a question for you. So when you when we talk about the CIP, I realized it was the 2023 CIP, which implied at one time doing the work in 2023. And I'm under the belief that we're probably not feasible for 2023 any longer. So doesn't it fall off 2023 anyway? So, you know, I, I'm a little confused about how the CIP works beyond 2023 and whether you have to, whether you just carry forward or whether you have to make another decision for 2024. So can we talk a little bit about the issue of timing of whatever decision we do make? So the issue wasn't so much timing as it was direction. It, really, I, I'm looking for our next step. Is it to move forward or is it to step away from that? Uh, in the February meeting, I think I gave three options. One was to, um, it was to proceed, it was to be done with it or to put a pause on it. Um, so we did put a, a brief pause on it. So at this meeting, I, I wanted to present two options. So it's not necessarily about the timing of it, it's about the location. Is this the right thing for that location? Are we moving forward with this or not? Uh, yeah, but for 2023, uh, there will be nothing that would happen. Any site. Right. Right. I, 
Right, so <clears throat> I'll just chime in here on uh, Navarre. I think that there's concerns about Navarre, e even if we split it up, you know, the, just the proximity to the homes. Is, I know that it's, <clears throat> like you said, it's probably the same distance as the sport court back, but it just doesn't get the same, have the same noise. Anyone else chime in on some of these other ones? You want to talk about Theodore a little bit more? Jan? What the, uh, you mentioned earlier about we have a mill there and it can be built without displacing another activity at the site. Right. The way we looked at it and evaluated it, that we would have to either get rid of a playground or a ball field. And I'm a playground person, so I like to keep the playground. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's still a very good site because of the parking and that type of thing. I mean, that's why I gravitate to it. But um, we have to decide are we going to get rid of a ball field or a playground? I think that that playground is, is a very spread out playground. It takes up a large footprint. I think there would be opportunity to, to make, it make it smaller, find another location, maybe even closer to one of the ball fields. So if you had a sibling playing sports or something, maybe it'd be a nice uh, activity that parents could watch both. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of synergies with moving it. It just, there is a cost. You just want it to yeah. reference yeah. you. It would, something would need to move Right. And it's one of our most heavily used playgrounds as well. Same thing for the baseball diamond that will be used. Or? It's underutilized right now, um, but it is used. The new public work site is just it seems like a non starter. Just. And Josh, can I ask? I know you haven't probably engaged in engineers in this question, but we know that the, that the, the slope issues at the golf course require a fair bit of, a fair bit of um, moving around and dirt and things. Mm -hmm. um, when you compare that to this site, are, are they apples to apples or is one 50% more expensive? And I'm just talking about pure pickleball courts. I mean, is, is there a significant driver behind cost? The earthwork can be expensive at, at the golf course, uh, probably out of all of the sites would require the most uh, earthwork. Uh, but our the engineers that, that quoted this out, they really felt what they had quoted was pretty realistic. Uh, Are you talking $50,000 of cost? Uh, I, I think it was 30,000 was so what sorry. the earthwork came out to. You know, Beaterwood could have some, you know, that is a pretty severe slope where the playground is, but also the playground is there, so you do have a relatively flat footprint. So with the ball fields, they're not utilized as much as the other parks? Uh, as a sport, uh, baseball is, it is very popular still. It is our nicest ball field that we have. We have the two other ball fields at Hackberry. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our largest field. We have a good partnership with Philly, the Lions. Mm -hmm. uh, right. or, um, it's a nice field. It's definitely worth keeping. It, it's it's a great field. Um, we just we'd like to see more use of it. Um, it's starting to age, show up, you know, some of the, the scoreboard. You can definitely use a little TLC, the dugouts. Yeah, there's no irrigation there, so it gets burned out pretty quick. Yep. Um, we when we. <coughs> Constructed the the soccer field there. Part of that was to rebuild, to rehabilitate the the well. So the well is now working, but still needs a irrigation system to be installed for the ballpark side of the field. So it's a possibility that that could be remedied. But the playground is used quite.
So the second open question was about the financial status of the golf course operation. And uh, this, sorry, the second open question from our uh, workshop um, was about the financial status of the golf course operation. There's a concern that how much the city's investment in that operation was in, of, of running a golf course was actually being covered by the revenue that that was generated. And so um, I worked with Ron Olson, the finance director here at the city, and Josh, and we came up with this, this summary, um, which got a little, a little tweaked along the way, but. <laughs> All right, so uh, on the left col column is preliminary 2022 results from the golf course, okay, where we had, had 14, thousand rounds that generated three hundred and eighty two thousand dollars just round rounding numbers here had expenses three hundred and thirty six thousand um, which means operating cash flow of forty six thousand dollars that was used to invest in um, uh, drainage work and what was the second big investment last year this last year yeah um, what the the pond dredging. Okay. Pond dredging and the, mo and the uh, uh, drainage issue. So that was that was $75,000. So for the year, we ended up with a, a deficit of cash flow of $29,000. So what I worked with Ron on was I said, all right, if this was a, if this is a standalone business, first of all, and if it was, uh, it, how representative was 2022 to the future income or the future? So what can we use? Can we use 2022 as a good representative, a good proxy for the future? And he said um, that rounds were up and Josh, and we all would agree, rounds were up in uh, 2022. And um, so adjusting for some rounds, uh, bring it down to a more normalized level, and also um, adjusting the mix to bring more youth rounds to the course, which who pays uh, uh, lower fees, um, offset by what we hope to be increased in cost in food sales. Um, I made an adjustment of $15,000 to the revenue to bring it to an estimate of about $367,000 going forward is what we can expect. Can you put the rounds up there? Uh, I'm sorry, I did not get that slide. Oh, you did? Okay. So from 2015 through 2022, uh, we averaged, uh, it was 11,000 rounds a year, with 18 and 19 being our lowest, where we were under 7,000 rounds both years. Yeah. So at, uh, on, like you said, uh, just as a uh, benchmark here, the average over the last seven years was about 11,000 rounds, and we were at 14,000 last year. So um, we had expenses of 336,000. Uh, there's going forward, there's going to be an additional administrative charge that is going to be applied to cover some of the the admin costs um, associated with the with the golf course. So. I made that adjustment as well. So going forward, net net is going forward, our quick estimate is that the golf course is going to be generating about 26, somewhere between 26 and call it $35,000 a year in cash flow. Okay, so go to the next slide. So if we've got between 20 and $30,000 or 20 and $35,000 of annual cash flow, what are we going to use that on? Well, unfortunately, we're in a situation now where there, there's been years of deferred maintenance and deferred investment in the golf course. And so we're sitting at a, at a spot where we have, we're facing a ton of capital expenditures in our near future. And by near, Josh, the question we talked about is about 10, 10 years-ish. So Josh put together this list, and I'll turn it over to him, of all of the capital investments that are going to, uh, that we're facing coming up in the next 10 years. 
Yeah, so uh, we've been really fortunate. I mean, the, the city council has done a great job trying to keep the, the course current. Um, so between last year and this year, we've made some really big upgrades. This year we purchased a new tea mower and rough mower. We've also purchased a sprayer that we can use at the golf course. Uh, so we are making those investments. Um, but coming up, we do have more needs. We have greens mower, greens roller, sod cutter. Um, <laughs> the big one is the irrigation replacement. Uh, really, they're going for about a million dollars for a nine-hole course. Uh, so it's not a small amount at all. At some point, the maintenance shop will need to be addressed. Um, it's aging. It floods constantly. Uh, we always have water in there. Uh, so it limits what we can have in the shop for storage. Um, on the CIP, we had the uh, picnic shelter, the uh, parking lot. Uh, actually, the parking lot is the upper parking lot we'll be having this year also. The lower parking lot and um, fire pit. So we did have some big improvements uh, that the park commission was looking at. Uh, and then really, no one wants to talk about it, but the clubhouse. It, it is an old building. It does need some TLC. Uh, and at this point, really, any dollar amount that's invested into it, you have to question, is it the right thing? We looked at the kitchen upgrades for the kitchen and the cost that came in just to be able to have the ability to do hot dogs. It, it just wasn't worth it. It was uh, over $270,000 just to do hot dogs and popcorn. So <clears throat> we've put together this analysis to try and explain where, what we're facing here, which is we have a business at one of our prize parks that is generating between twenty dollars and $30,000 a year, whereas we're facing to maintain that business, can continue to invest in that business and to grow the business, uh, we're facing a lot of expenditures here. So that was... Um, something that came out of our uh, question that came out of our our March uh, meeting, and I guess this is this is um, this is why it matters um, to this decision. And like I said, this is one of our prized parks. It's currently being reserved for a single activity that serves only a relatively few or no residents. And to make matters worse, the business that is at that park is generating only a slice of what it needs to maintain that. And so we don't, we're not saying that this needs to make money, that it needs to even break even, but we are, um, the gap between between making money and covering the expenses is pretty big here. Any questions on that? I would just say it doesn't seem that far out of whack except for the irrigation system. And I have no idea if that's something you have to do or you can do it for a lot less or you don't do it. You can go cheap and you will struggle through. Um, it, it's not something, yeah, it, it, it's never a good thing. I think you would, you could vouch for that. Yeah, no. That number doesn't surprise me. No. I mean, I, from my experience in the golf world, you know, we're not alone. Many, many clubs all over the country are, are kind of being, are facing this right now. They're, they're playing with deferred maintenance for 40, 50 years, and eventually you gotta, you gotta pay up and, and address some of these issues. Um, our golf course here that we love so much is a very unique animal. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful park. It's an operating business, so it does require subsidy. Um, most parks shouldn't make money, you know, Burton, Summit, Peterwood, they're not there to make money. They require capital investments, but this just so happens to require more than most. Um, it's, so it's kind of in a category all unto itself. And um, while the last three years have been great, and there's been years before that have been great too, um, the future is uncertain. Um, so I think we need to be thinking about, you know, if a part of this whole concept with pickleball was, you know, how do we introduce other ideas to help offset some of these costs, and we could debate whether pickleball was the right idea or hockey or what, but the fact remains there is potential funding uh, deficiencies in the future that I think we all need to address, and if coming out of this, from my view, if this all led to us finding a nice solution for that, I think that's a, a really great thing. Um, you know, one way is to 
find more golfers, which would be great. And I think we should continue to do that, lean into marketing efforts. You know, we renamed the course last year, kind of leaning into the, the branding around that and finding ways to get more play. Uh, I know, like, Baker is just completely jammed. You can't even, kids can't even get in there to play. Um, so let's find ways to do more youth golf at, at the course. Um, but as far as the ongoing um, capital constraints, um, an idea that myself and Chirsty have been, have been batting around, which I'm really excited about, um, is to explore heading into next year, 100th anniversary, creating an endowment fund of sorts. Um, there is uh, a uh, Bjorn a Legacy Fund that Rick's been a part of that was used to help uh, fund Big Island, um, which was very successful. Um, that was a unique kind of single purpose effort. Um, this I envision being more kind of ongoing where you would raise the money and the income from that fund is used to help offset some of these capital improvements. Um, there's a couple examples of this that, that are happening right now that are successful. The National Links Trust in DC and Friends of the Muni in Charleston, um, they've done this. They're, they're, um, endowment funds that are set up to save municipal golf courses that are facing these challenges. So I'd, I'd love to lean into kind of trying to replicate that here at the golf course. I think heading into next year with the 100 year anniversary, it's a perfect time to really lean into the history of the course and try to, best we can, set it up for success for another 100 years. Um, so, but you know, as long as we have these capital deficiencies, it does beg the question, to what extent should the city be doing that and what other uses have just as much a right to be there as anyone else. That's just, to me, become clear. So um, anyway, but I I look forward to leaning into this effort to try to solve the, the fundraising challenge there. You know, one of the things we didn't consider uh, when we looked at pickleball, although we brought it up early on, was whether you did have a membership-based system where you could do open play for, you know, 30 bucks a month and drop in play was $10 at the time. You know, and you look at, you could easily support 300 people, right? So I think you could, you could add to your 20 to 30,000 pretty quickly if you did a fee-based, which would be a great way to limit the number of players to a reasonable number. Um, and also maybe bring in some revenue. You'd have to figure out how you, how you manage it, right? Because um, people are used to showing up um, and just playing. But I think there's enough demand out there that I think you could. I think you, I, I, I seriously think you could charge a fee. People drop in and play at, I don't know what Orono charges, but I know um, West Tonka charges $7 to drop in and play. It's different for residents. Yeah, I think it's, it's one for residents and another for non-residents. So people are used to playing to, to drop in. But you could have a, you could have a, a citizens, of Orno, or of Orno could have memberships and others could be drop-in. And you could vary those fees according to your demand is a great way to make sure you're not overwhelming the property, limit the hours, you know, so you're not doing it during league play, you're not creating that overlapping demand. So I think there are some ways you could think about it from more of an economic perspective. to help to think about a fundraising effort and an endowment. Um, there could not be a better time to launch a fundraising campaign for the golf course considering just, you know, everybody has come out and passioned about the golf course and the fact that it's gonna be the 100 year anniversary. Um, and there, and you know, with things like the clubhouse kind of on the, on the horizon, there could be also naming rights. I mean, there could be a lot of potential um, for legacy, you know, and so I think um, I, I, I think we might just want to look at these two things as two really important community initiatives, but they maybe they don't need to go together. Uh, I, I actually got I live near Navarre and I was kind of excited, although I didn't I didn't knock on doors to say, you know, would, would this bother you? And so I think that would obviously have to be done, you know, to really think about that site. but. It is a playground and a sport court with a basketball hoop, so it's not a quiet site right now, right next to the town center. So, you know, I, and I, so again, I, I think Peter would sound great too. You know, I know there would be some impacts there for pickleball, but um, 
we, we, I hope we can achieve both of these goals. Well, with the amount of people that have contacted me and why we're even talking about pickleball is the fact that Orono residents wanted pickleball and that's why we are where we are today. And unfortunately, there's more people that show up that do not want to have pickleball in the golf course, or I'm not even sure they want it in the city. And I think we have to uh, honor the people that did come forward. They may not be sitting in the uh, audience right now, but they still contact me, and I still hear they still want pickleball. So I hope that we can find a way to do that. As far as the golf course, maybe the thing I think of is maybe we need to look at the prices for the leagues. Maybe we need to increase prices. Uh, if it's they want to see a better course, we heard a lot of people saying that it needs work, it needs help. Well, if uh, we find a way to bring money in to enhance the golf course, then possibly a fee or something like that will help us reach the goal that everybody's looking for. So that's where I'm at. Josh, can you remind us, I know you talked about how many rounds are played, but I remember I asked you a while ago in terms of leagues, how many people play league and how many are or no residents. In terms of regular people who are coming there routinely, who are most invested in the course, how many people are we talking about that might make these kind of investments? Um, are you asking, are they residents? Or? Well, yeah, and how many <coughs> players are there? Well, we have some league representatives. Uh, yes. Uh, there's probably around 60 for Tuesday night. Thursday yeah. night's about 25. Yeah, and your parking lot can it take the Tuesday night league the way it is? The uh, Wednesday night league women's, uh, that is growing and it's pretty small. Last year I think it was around 14. Um, we have about 60% of play is um, non-resident, is that about right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we do, we do have representation from the community as well. You know, the initial thought of the golf course, one of the big things, and obviously it's not in the grid, is the long-term viability of the golf course. You know, that was a discussion that we've had numerous times. We brought it up numerous times. And, uh, well, we know that pickleball is a revenue driver. Uh, obviously, it's a destination. Uh, I've heard numerous times from people in the community uh, building pickleball courts at the golf course that didn't even know we had a golf course. Uh, I've heard from numerous people that they golf and play pickleball. Um, so that was always in the back of our mind, uh, my mind at least, when I recommend the golf course. Obviously the cash flow situation that we're up against at the golf course is something that's still top of mind. But I love the idea of let's find ways to make it viable. It doesn't have to be pickleball. We have other sites, we've looked at other sites. None of those were, a couple of them were non-starters, but there were other sites, be it Peterwood, be it um, the fire station, that could feasibly have pickleball as well. So, Again, like my driver here is that, can we do pickleball at the golf course? Of course. Could it help the financial stability of the golf course? Sure. Will it? None of us will ever know. Um, that's, that's kind of my rationale. So the, the fact that we have other revenues to ensure the financial stability <coughs> of the golf course, maybe that one gets pulled off the list. And so I think that's uh, something we all need to consider as well. I know it's a, so unknown, but I think this um, trying to really lean into the alliance with the school is interesting to me. There's a lot of pickleball players that are there, they're engaged, they're active, and to the extent that a future pickleball location requires fundraising, it just seems like working with all those people, bringing people together to try to you know find a, a common move towards a specific site. I think the, the OK Kids site, something that, you know situated close to where it's already happening. Um, this, you know, it's not controlled by us, but I think trying to fully flush that out with, with the school district is, is worthwhile. Another thing I had on my list here that I didn't talk about was just that uh, 
the need for an updated master plan. So most golf courses, if not all, have a master plan. We have one here. Um, it's a bit dated. It needs to be refreshed. But that going through an effort to really study that and gather input, um, community input, and park commission input to try to prioritize these items and really understand, um, you know, where we're going to be spending money and when at the golf course. I think is uh, an important effort that we should be looking at this year. I would just say that where I'm at, I would, if I had to make a choice, I would choose to separate the pickleball and the golf. I wouldn't spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars on a preliminary design that I don't think is going to result in the ultimate location. I'd put it to one of those meetings that we get done before the um, before the event and find the right place for pickleball. Yeah, so I appreciate everyone's input and ideas tonight. I think we got some good creative ideas. I think that that this, you know, this analysis was eye-opening to me. I knew it was, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know there. So I think that that is, we knew it. Was, we did know it was bad years ago when we started talking about this. And when pickleball, when um, residents. Uh, approach us about pickleball that was you know in my mind that was a great match that was a way to to address this and also bring a new uh, amenity to our residents here so uh, but uh, so I think where we are right now is the vote to move forward with continuing to design is a realization that no matter how much the city invests in increasing the golf course revenue, or we could double that, it still uh, doesn't come close to addressing the needs, the deferred needs from the past, much less going forward. And at the end of the day, the golf course is one of our active parks where we are exploring, we should be exploring ways to bring new non-golf activities that benefit all or no residents, not just golfer residents. But where I where I am is I, um, I we've talked a lot about about this idea, and I think that that if this commission decides that there's a possibility to um, is if there's a possible way to fund the upcoming needs um, of the golf course using external funding in addition to city funds, while we continue to focus on golf at that park um, as a way to benefit Orno residents while um, adding pickleball to another site, not at the golf course, then I'm open to, I personally am open to that idea as long as we um, move quickly towards uh, looking for a plan B site. Um, after all, we have time to explore this idea, right? We are, we're, the window's closed for anything this year anyways. The window's closed for anything at the golf course next year, essentially. So I think that this is a worthwhile pursuit, my personal opinion, so. I think we really need to look at the golf course and what we're doing here and how we enhance the golf course in whatever way we can do that. And pickleball off the table doesn't mean we really need to concentrate on how we're going to make this a better golf course. So it doesn't go the way of Hollydale and all these other little courses that tend to close. So, I, personally I think it's a long shot. I mean, I think this is a Hail Mary that you're going to get funding and you're going to find a way to make that work. So I think if my gut tells me that in hindsight, we're going to look back and say we missed a great opportunity. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, that's to be found out. Um, what I'd like to suggest is um, that we keep the golf course as a site that we're considering for pickleball, not doing anything next this year anyway, right? Not doing anything anywhere else. Uh, and in the absence of a better site, 
for coming back here because this is the best site so far. And in the absence of progress on this, then you can't have a small number of people benefiting from this level of investment. It's got to be something that draws a significantly larger portion of the community in benefiting from this kind of investment. Um, and we know as the fastest growing sport, there are hundreds and hundreds of people looking for places to play. Um, and it, it has the numbers, it has the potential, it has the potential to generate revenue, it has the potential to bring golfers there, it has the potential to bring visibility there, um, and investment, right? So I really do think that in hindsight, we missed a huge opportunity earlier this year. Um, I think it's a long shot that you're gonna solve the problem of this recurring nature you know, you, you solve this problem and 10 years from now you got another problem because you're still going to need different capital investments. Um, so, I agree that it's off the CIP for this year. Why, why move forward and do a design for something that you're not going to build in two years anyway? By then, you probably have lost so much momentum, you're probably not going to do it. So, I'm okay with taking it off the CIP, but I think it sits equally among these sites that we're still evaluating to be brought back for it. And I think finding an alternate site is a solution to getting it off the golf course site because it's still the better site. And I think moving forward with that deliberately in the next 12 months is really important to, you know, that being um, the solution, right? We can't just kick that wall take the can down the, yeah, down the road. Right. This is a huge amount of money. Yeah, so what does voting for option two tonight mean? It means removing it from the CIP this year, which is effectively already removed, but it removes it also at the, at the golf course, okay? Now we go through the CIP process every year, okay? And so we start that in the fall again. So not, nothing's, you know, we will then assess you know, based on what we know then and and our priorities, and then set the CIP accordingly. You know, recommend the CIP, you know, according to our priorities. So, as far as you know, you bring up a good point about what happens if this if if we can't get funding, we can't address this thing. We try either way, you know, which way in the next year. We, you know, we and 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 if we move forward at a different site with pickleball, first of all, that does mean that we can't come back here with pickleball. But we need to, you know, bring some activity back to the to that park. So we look at other other activities. I suppose that's what would happen. I don't know. To the golf course master plan that was previously stated, the idea was to bring more activity. So. If that's outdated based on feedback from residents, then agree that we need to redress it. Also, just chime in that we, um, I know it, it's a big number, it's, some of those numbers jump off the page, but it, we figured it out for 100 years, and I'm personally optimistic we can figure it out. <laughs> so, all right, so everyone I think has had an opportunity to share. Any other thoughts? We need to start working on a motion uh, to make a recommendation to City Council for the and to answer answer the question at hand here. Formal so. comments. Yeah, you said it, yeah, formal comments. Yep, we will. We're going to make a motion, and then we'll take pop, public comment. So yeah. Do you want to take the first step? No, he did say you vote. They just make a motion, then you get the comment, and then you vote based on the comments. Thank you for your clarification. Uh, sorry, so I'll, I'll, well, I'll make a motion that we pursue option two to remove the golf course park improvement plan from the current CIP goals. And uh, there's a couple parts to this. I wrote these down. Um, and I recommend that we quickly move forward with the next best site that we can determine here over the next couple months. Um, spend the rest of this year uh, formulating a strategy to bolster the financial stability of the golf course via an endowment fund or otherwise to help pay for future capital improvement needs. 
And lastly, update the master plan um, to address where these dollars will be needed and prioritized. I think, uh, thank you for that. <clears throat> I think we need to fill in the blank on what the max plan B is. At least have, uh, leaving this meeting having an <coughs> idea between us all of what plan B site would look like. Does that have to be part of the motion or are you just suggesting we do that? Motion was clear. Yeah, I was asking. It was very clear. Okay. okay. I'm asking for us to have that discussion. I'll um, second the motion. Yeah. yeah. If, if for instance, the the um, uh, fire station mm -hmm. number one, behind fire station number one, if we agree that that's maybe the next thing for us to explore, then I think that that should be part of the motion. That should be named as part of the can we it's just my opinion. Can we do a separate motion for that? I, I, I think we need, we, should, we need a separate motion. So we're talking about the golf course enhancement plan. Yep. We need a, a motion to uh, proceed or, or to remove. Okay. Um, and then we can you can make a second. All right, so why don't you start with your first? Okay, I'll make a motion to remove the golf course park improvement plan from the current CIP goals. Second. I'll second. You know, all in favor? I thought we were going to have discussion. Oh. Have the comment. Okay. No, we're going to have comment comment after oh, our motions. No, no, no. Yeah. No. 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 This is how I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, public comment after we take yeah, up either motion. any one of these topics here. This is not a public hearing. This is a public meeting. It was advertised the there will be opportunity for public comment. There will be opportunity for public comment, yes. That's after you, you, yeah. you yeah. after yeah. We, we make a motion to make a recommendation you did. that goes to city council. Yes, so you'll have an opportunity now. You'll have an opportunity at city council to, to make your comments as well. Is there a parliamentarian for this group? You need one. Uh, because it looks like you could use one, maybe. Yeah. 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 The, the chair the operates the meeting. I'm operating the meeting, thank you. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah. You can get your comments before we go. Let's open it up to public comments. Please approach. Peter Honick, 40 Smith and 45 Smith. I'd love to see Tom Olson's uh, historical capex and increase the value of land along with the one year projection that we got. I'm sure it'd be pretty easy to get multiple years. I think cherry picking one in terms of, hey, we spent a bunch of money on mowers or whatever is, is disingenuous. Um, Cameron or Brian, did you reach out? on these parts, um, you need to answer that. Brian, you can bring a tropical environment to Mexico, like a golf course. I'm Brian over here. Cameron, if you're yeah. comparing a tropical environment, like a golf course, to what's at Orno, which is essentially no trees, where sound carries, especially in the winter with hockey. Um, Gordy used to be, a, I think, 16 pickleball courts, both indoor and outdoor, within 500 yards of where you guys sit here. And they come with even professional trainers. Uh, and they even can service 60% of the pickleball users that are non residents. Uh, you want to spend $350,000 you don't have making local residents upset local, I mean, who live around this park and use the park. Brian, you said that there have been years of deferred maintenance on the golf course. Well, you're the chair of the park board. <laughs> oh, hey, we forgot about this. Well, let's do a pickleball short, and then we can address our deficiencies that we've had for years. You know, I just don't think that that is really great. Um, and Gordy, I appreciate you know you're comparing what could be going on at this wonderful asset like Sharps Park or Saving the Union Austin as wonderful examples of how to get people there and more engagement out of the, the current water pollution source that is there. Um, you know, I don't think we're in favor of a pickleball court in the middle of a wonderful resource like that. Thanks. Well said.
The best part about this meeting was we talked about the golf course and how we can enhance the quality of the golf course, which does not have a good reputation relative to Sri River. The people who play it love the golf course. But this site, this golf course, is an integral part of the character of this community. You may call it a park. We sure as heck don't want to call it a playground. We don't have room for pickleball. We don't have room for nothing. If we want to maintain the character of the place. But the other thing is, I want to commend the commission for the information we got tonight. It was great. You guys have done a very good job. And for the first time, I think we were understanding what the mission has been. But we need to share that mission with the community. Uh, when I bring this subject up in the community, people don't know. And I know the pickleball is catching on. And my kids play it. I play it all the kind of stuff. But it's not part of the heritage of this shrine, which is called the Oral Public Golf Course. That's why I want to stress again, the best part of this meeting was talking about the golf course and how we can enhance the golf course and avoid traffic and noise and parking. This site should not be a playground. It should be the best public golf course in our city. So congratulations again for the great work. I wish we had more of this information on the federal list this meeting. But remember the quality of this facility and what it has meant to this community. Thank you. Amen. that we take a step back and up and do a community survey to understand do we need pickleball and is there a, a thought on the golf course being the site. There's so much angst that I see in here. This is a huge decision and I think as you all think back five years from now, you would probably want to ground all your decisions in good data and there's all these pockets. There's phone calls, there's petitions, there's the open house, there's other meetings, but we haven't been able to knit that together to have a data-based sentiment, so I think if we could do a community survey by a third party so it's all designed to be unbiased, I think we could all be grounded in that, and if you look back in five years, it would feel like you did the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. and all that. But instead, I got a letter in my inbox, um, which I'd like to submit for the record, and I'm going to read it because it's from one of the neighbors um, that has owns property across the street from the golf course. And his name is William W. McGuire, 315 Woodhill Road. So here's his letter. I am unfortunately not able to attend the meeting tonight in person. 
hence this letter to the Planning Commission and the City Council. My wife and I, and now our two daughters and their husbands and children, have lived in the immediate area for several decades and have valued many of the characteristics of Orono that we believe distinguish it as a community. Important to this discussion, we have acted on numerous occasions to preserve and protect the natural environment and support the continuation of larger property requirements that limit moves towards markedly increased density and the demise of the natural environment outside of the relatively higher density of the main town of Orono. As a result, we own significant acres of land and several houses as a reflection of our efforts to help retain the historical environmental focus of the community. We are fortunate to be able to be in this situation and support the community through significant property tax and other contributions and actions. We are also full year residents with no real estate or vacation homes outside of this area. We value what this community is today and are concerned that it remains what we perceive to be distinguishing and essential elements of its past that, that we and so many others here value. I believe the effort to diminish the Orono golf course and replace part of it with pickleball courts, an ice rink, or other physical facilities is ill-conceived, short-sighted, and damaging to our community both for those living in the immediate area of the property, but for all of the community and area residents and visitors as well. Whether pickleball is a worthwhile endeavor is not the issue. Instead, the question is at what cost, both financially and in, in the intangibles that surrounding the value of the open spaces, are we willing to push through an action that compromises an already important and long established community asset? Further, to do so in the face of a strong condemn condemnation by area residents to fulfill the reported desires of a few unnamed parties, or in some cases, misstated recommendation recommendations or letters of support. The negative community reaction is well documented through numerous letters and public petitions. The supporting voices are not. Further to this, Further to this, there is an entire level of information that is missing from this discussion and requires broad and thoughtful consideration. This includes the costs of all consultations, planning, actual construction, demolition, relocation, ongoing maintenance, and the like. These in turn must can, be integrated. Can, you just, can, you can just I finish? I have a couple more slides. Yeah, if, if you're almost done, sure in turn must be integrated into the discussion of how these capital and operating costs will be funded in perpetuity, not just for upfront building. Taxes are already a major burden on all re residents and an action without longer reign vi vision is sense senseless. Just one more paragraph. I return to where I begin. This is an ill-conceived plan with a dramatic set of ongoing negative consequences. Use, use of another site to pursue all or some of the under consideration ideas may have some virtue, but I cannot attest to that at this time. I can be sure, however, that alteration of the Orono Golf Course for this proposal is a bad idea and should be finally abandoned at this time. Sincerely, William W. McGuire. Thank you. Comments? Yes. My name is Scott Crockett, I live at 540 Old Crystal Bay Road. I've come to many of the meetings before, spoke at uh, one of the last meetings. Thank you for all of your efforts. Um, I can't find it within me how I would want to volunteer to do this job. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I arrived a little late, so I may have missed. Uh, comments on the consideration of the Crystal Bay Park area or the ball fields up on Old Crystal Bay Road and County Road 6. I look forward to having pickleball. Uh, I object to having it at the golf course. I think this doesn't make sense. The last time I spoke here, uh, I, I said, and I, I really emphasized that you need to focus on your core business. 
And I think it's great that you call the golf course a park, but you can't run it as a park, you've got to run it as a golf course, and you've got somebody there who knows how to do that, you've got a good manager there. Um, sit down and talk to Marshall Hambro, who is a clubhouse attendant. By the way, I'm a former clubhouse attendant from 2018 to 2021. 20, uh, um, we are always throwing ideas around about the veterans that like to come out there and play. Uh, they have a, a special city, state, or federal government uh, really is set up to be marketers. I have a marketing and sales background, uh, and I spent most of my career in the uh, alpine ski industry. Um, by the way, every sport out there that's still around was the fastest growing sport at one time. <laughs> uh, I have said before, focus on your core business. You need to be competitive. You need to be, remain competitive because people will Run up to Baker or down to Three Rivers. Three Rivers. I'm sorry, Three Rivers and Glen down Lake. to 62 yeah. and Glen Lake. Glen Lake, thank you, which are in much better condition. Um, so focus on increasing the morning and afternoon play during the week. Uh, maybe a patron card. Maybe we can do more season passes. Um, I'm not quite sure why there's a locals and a non locals rate. I guess I would like to see it be all one rate and hopefully the, the lower of the locals rate. <clears throat> there could be a kid's uh, two hour session at the golf course, one or two days a week in the mornings. And it'd be really nice if you could have high school kids or parents that walk with each group and they get out to go get to go out and play for as many holes as they can for two hours. Most of them will be nine, but that's another idea. Um, you're in a real pickle here with being an upgrade. I'm very surprised that this is the first time I've heard that you've recognized it because we've been saying it to Jason and then Joey and Josh uh, for as long as I have worked there. Um, so, you know, maybe another thought sell it to us. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Josh out there many times if you recognize me at all. Uh, I've seen a lot over the years. I'm old. Uh, you better come up with some marketing programs to get people out there. I would personally bring people out there daily. But for what the fee is and what you get out of it for the short time, it's competitive. And it's not an ideal thing for me to bring friends out to. I pay the membership. I'm able to get my value out of the membership. I have friends who we try to sponsor the clubhouse. I'm not a hot dog fan. But I mean popcorn, you don't eat popcorn on the golf course. Uh, I just feel that the pickleball court is a bad thing. If you need 400 feet outside of the pickleball court, they have freedom on the golf course. Um, the pickleball court, there should be good protective netting to protect from golf. There is high maintenance on those nettings. I personally know the people from Hollywood that ran that. And there's upkeep on any fencing you're going to have to protect the public and anybody. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? Um, I just wanted to note that I think you all are citizens are blessed to be able to play at the private golf courses or the upscale public courses. 
uh, he really needs to concentrate on bringing people in from outside the community to keep that golf course going. He needs some uh, of normal residents, especially with younger children that will come out there once in a while. Thanks, you. All right, any other comments before I close? All right, close public comment on that. So, we are at a point where we were <coughs> heard a motion and we're about ready to vote. Second. I second. Second. Do you want to repeat the motion? Yeah, this, 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 the first motion was to remove the golf course park improvement plan from the current CFP. Okay. So and we've heard a second from Rick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes 7 0. Do you have another motion? Okay. I can keep going here. I wrote this down. But um, um, so the next motion is to move forward with. Uh, the next steps of adding pickleball at the next best location that we determine over the next two months. Yeah, I don't know that we need a motion unless we come up with that specific plan. Okay, I gotcha. How does, how does the agree? capital improvement plan and the fact that it's not on a capital improvement plan affect our ability to make a motion? You can, we can look at anything as a park commission and then you can determine how that project is possible over time. Um, you can say today you have a certain site in mind, but we will have to start budgeting for that. That won't happen until later this fall, um, so it'll be a process to get to that point. Do we have a clear next you, Can you put up the, the list again? Yeah. yeah. As, as the person who's reviewed all of these, I would say my next two would be the fire station uh, and meter work would be my next two. Both have pros and cons. Um, fire station is adjacent to Holman, um, which has pros and cons. My understanding is that after we denied the uh, the Orno uh, Hockey Association, there went along Lake, who was doing improvements to their hockey rink to support them, since we couldn't. Um, and so they're doing improvements to their hockey rink. Um, so there might be synergies between the two parks. Maybe there's uh, opportunity to build a path between the connect paths. Um, who knows? But just an option there for the fire station. As we, as I've also stated, in order to do that, we would likely have to displace, move, relocate the donation garden, which is a challenge. The Beadwood Park, we would have to displace or move, uh, probably the playground, um, but that might be easier. So both both options, but those are kind of my two recommendations about some of those parks. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> I would have said I don't know enough to pick one, but now that I know that Cameron can. Pick one. I, would, I mean, I like the idea of narrowing it down. So if we have a top two, I would support that. Yeah, I agree. I think Beaver Wood is, is a possibility, even though we're relocating things. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what, what goes in the next. Yeah, what is the next steps, Josh, for either of those? Next so steps, what? unless you have an idea of which location you're looking at. I wouldn't make a motion. I would maybe just at our next regular, uh, our next work session, <coughs> have a few sites to discuss uh, as a committee, and then prepare something for the next regular meeting where you can make a motion um, to move forward with that. So right. and we really, we would be starting over, um, so it wouldn't be at the same point in the timeline for budgeting. Uh, it's really a, a fresh start. Okay. Our next meeting is May. Uh, something like that and uh, that is a formal meeting so we can make a motion yeah. at that meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is consensus? Do you guys want to work on it and have something possibly prprepared for a motion on, at our main meeting? And would we have to go through the feasibility study again or is there information from this feasibility study that would influence or no? We can, we would have to, the next step really is if you made a motion, we would have to take that to city council uh, for approval. And we could take some of what we've gleaned from that feasibility study and apply it to different sites. I mean, we know, sure, some of the earthwork might be uh, much less, but the cost of building a parking lot will be the same. The cost of building six courts will be the same. Yeah. I think by that point, I think it'd be good. Um, I 
teachers. And I know, see if I can learn some of your math skills. It'd be great to understand uh, you know, those two sites, what would go into it. to the people that came out to all the meetings with regards to pickleball and our um, well, our chamber was full then and so I think we do owe it to those people that want to have pickleball in their community to look at doing this. Absolutely. I thought the survey was a good idea. Maybe that's something we could look at doing and do. Just try to get gather more. You had other parts of yeah. I mean, I don't know if these could necessarily be going or not, but you know, the the two themes were you know committing to spending time and effort this year into solving this financial riddle at the course. So did, does that need a motion, or is it just kind of an ongoing work stream that we're going to? If you um, so, if you were to start utilizing the five hundred one c three in that capacity, that's something that we would need to take to city council first. Um, so if you have a I just don't think we're there. Yep. I don't okay. that. Okay. 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 Yep. And then the, the last thing is just um, updating the master plan. So, uh, all right. So, anything else on this topic before I close? We move on. No. Okay. Thanks for everyone for good work. Excellent work. Uh, Parks Department update. Okay. Um, one thing that we've been working on, a uh, really exciting project, is Hackberry Park. Uh, we've been uh, we met as a subcommittee to discuss uh, the, the master plan for Hackberry Park. Uh, we contracted, or we are working with Bolton and Mink. They're working on getting us a quote this week um, that we can bring to city council, so a scope of work for what this master plan would be. Um, the house at 140 Hackberry Hill was uh, turned over to the city of Orono. Um, so it, it's really a kind of a blank slate of a, of a park, a uh, really exciting opportunity. And um, so we met with Goldman Mink. Once we get that quote, we will be bringing that to city council next week on the 10th. Um, and then timeline, what we'd like to do is have a draft master plan to the park commission uh, by July 5th. And then um, to have the park commission make a, a recommendation at the August 7th meeting which means we could eventually get the master plan over to city council for approval on uh, September 25th. Now, in between when we receive that, or sorry, once it is approved by council and um, kind of August timeline, that's our opportunity to really engage with the public, uh, with stakeholders, whether it's uh, uh, different leagues that use the, the space. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to start reaching out. So. This is just our kind of our idea of how this park looks in, in the next few years, uh, and then in the following years we look at construction uh, and design or design construction. <coughs> Does that make sense on timeline? Yeah, the May or the uh, July meeting is that a formal meeting? Um, I no, it is a work session on the sixth. Okay, or the fifth. I'm oh, sorry, July. The fifth, yeah, the fourth is a Tuesday, um, so we moved it to the Wednesday. Okay. Question: So, are you in the scoping phase with Bolton Bank, or I'm sorry, I missed the word. Yeah, so just they're kind of right now we're trying to determine what they will provide as far as documentation that we can base off, you know, for for our commission. What do we need? They will not be doing community engagement, so um, we contracted with Bolden Bank for the Summer Beach Master Plan. It's essentially, they'll be providing the same documents without the uh, community engagement. We'll be taking that on, we have the format that they set out for that, and we'll just be picking that up. Okay. And any, any additional documents that we need, we just contract separately. Okay. And 
can you just, have you given them a program for the park or is it up to them to propose a program for the park? So they're working with the Hackberry subcommittee, which is Brian and Gordon. Um, so right now we just kind of wanted to get the scope of work to them. Uh, and so once they give us a quote and we get that to city council, then we can start moving forward with them. So they'll take whatever feedback they're getting from our subcommittee, from park commission, from community engagement. Got it. Thank you. And Brian and I have been working on this. Um, we've engaged with, there's five associations that are active there now. There's softball, baseball, soccer, flag football, and lacrosse. So all these groups are using it. They all want something out of it. Um, but so we're gonna to try to come up with a plan that, you know, you're never gonna make everyone happy, but hopefully the most people happy as possible. Um, and we're gonna have a listening session uh, early May, Brian, or late April, early May, we talked about. Um, they were gathered the neighborhood input as well. Yeah, we're gonna, um, uh, we'll get the uh, Mona Mink report back or, or uh, proposal back. Then set some dates, including where, when we first uh, reach out to the neighborhood. We're still hoping to maintain some, I think there's a playground there, that's actually the same as the Mars playground, so we gotta keep it, still maintain some form of yeah. community. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, one, one thing that we will see happen pretty soon here is our, the fire department will be doing a controlled burn of the house for training purposes. Uh, I guess first the PD will be going in and doing some training for that. Police department will go in for some training, uh, it'll be burned down, and then the demo will happen. So the fencing will be removed. Uh, probably a few of the trees right surrounding the house uh, will be removed as well. Uh, but we didn't want anyone to be surprised. The process is starting, but we want to, we don't want the house sitting vacant in an active park. Um, <clears throat> staff reports, uh, just some tasks over the winter. Uh, as everyone knows, everyone's sick of it. It's the third snowiest winter on record, uh, almost 90 inches of snow. Uh, so our two full-time employees, Jack and Rick, have been working hard plowing uh, trails and parks, doing a great job, but it's a lot of work. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, we've, we've had some great equipment upgrades uh, over this last two years. Uh, thanks to the city council, we've had um, just Got our fertilizer and top dresser for the golf course, um, which a lot of people were asking for top dressing and aeration. Very excited about that. We're taking on our own pesticide program at the golf course um, and actually all of our parks. Uh, so that is my background. Um, very excited to see that. We can uh, provide a much better program for the city while saving quite a bit more money. Um, can't wait, cannot wait. Uh, we had two mowers purchased. The guys have been waxing them far more than they should be right now, but they're, they're ready to get out there. <laughs> and uh, again, a sprayer uh, to go towards our new pesticide program. Uh, we have, uh, we're working on staff appointments for this season. We've had a, a better response this year than last year, but we still have some gaps that we need to fill. Uh, and then one, one item that's come up uh, and, and has been an issue is uh, at Lurton Dog Park in the parking lot, we had a recent break-in in one of the cars. So I'm working with the police chief, Corey Farniak, on getting some temporary cameras up. Um, we're working on enforcement, and that, not just for the break-ins, but also the parking pass violations, and looking also at getting some permanent cameras set up at that site as well. Um, so it is something that we are working on. We, we do understand the concern at that site, and um, we're addressing it. Last year we talked about looking at RFID alerts and stuff, is that just a different where, method? Of where we left it, so we changed our, updated our city code. Um, so before, um, they were not enforcing the parking pass violations because it was a misdemeanor, which yeah. seemed a little heavy handed for the, the police department to be enforcing that. Um, so they are, uh, they are going through uh, quite a bit more now, uh, and that is one of the top priorities. Great. For the gentleman that wanted to hear more about the golf course, <laughs> um, we do have uh, our clubhouse manager Kim's done a great job this year. Um, so we have a what's new this year is a junior league. 
We already have 40 kids signed up for the program. Really excited to see that happen. Um, she is taking over management of the Women's League on Wednesday night uh, and already has quite a few people signed up for it. She started a mixed league on Monday evenings. Uh, that kind of happened halfway through the season last year, um, but she already has quite a few people signed up for that. Uh, she's doing a great job. She's a very creative individual, and she wants to see the course full just as much as anyone else. Um, yeah, and just some upcoming projects or tasks. We have the Big Island dock repairs. Um, so it was the replacing the wood piling with some steel posts, uh, and they're on roller casters, so the dock will uh, move up and down easily. We will be completing our right-of-way tree inventory. Uh, the golf course will open at some point. Uh, they're saying maybe more snow tomorrow night. We'll see. Um, we're hoping for the week of the 17th. That's my dream. Yes. Uh, golf course. Of April. June. Uh, we do have the golf course nursery project. Uh, so we have an older variety of bent grass in that nursery, and it's done a great job. But it, it's gets disease, certain diseases very easily, uh, it's not very drought resistant, so we'll be reseeding a very aggressive new bent grass um, from the developed in the best school in the US, Penn State. <laughs> uh, and then really our, our focus right now is transitioning all parks and, and golf course uh, for spring. So we have uh, docks going out, we're closing some of our lake access points where snowmobiles had access. Playground inspe inspections <coughs> and tree work. And that's it for parks. All right, uh, Commissioner Updates. Who wants to start? We start at Gordy's end. Uh, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Nor do I. I do not either. <laughs> uh, I'll just take on, on the Kim comment. Uh, like the social media has been good. It's been fun to see. We hosted a birthday party there this winter, which was cool to see. So if you have any kids who need a birthday party, that was, that was kind of a cool thing that she's doing there too. So good job, Kim. Thank you, everyone, for your good work. Um, all right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass the seven zero. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.